Hello everyone, I'm Chris with AffinityHM.com, also from CPAP for Beginners on Facebook. If you're watching this on YouTube, Facebook, wherever it is you're watching from, just comment hashtag CPAP, hashtag CPAP in the comment, and you will be automatically entered into a contest to win a gift card at the end of the show later on tonight. Tonight, we're going to be talking about CPAP for beginners. I think that is the perfect topic because so many people have so many questions, uh, whether they just now are thinking maybe you have sleep apnea all the way to getting the CPAP machine. After you get the CPAP machine, how do you deal with it? Deal with problems that many, many people have with CPAP. We're going to answer a lot of questions about CPAP and the problems that you guys are having right now in this video. There's going to be people in the chat who can answer your questions as well as myself toward the end of the video. Uh, we're going to go over the most common problems that people have while using CPAP. When I say CPAP, I mean CPAP or BiPAP, AutoPAP, all of that, all of the different sleep therapy, positive airway pressure devices. So let's just get right into it. Here's the title. It's a CPAP tutorial for beginners. And this information is actually life-changing. And as I wrote in the description, I don't think that I'm overstating it. I know that I'm not overstating it because when you need CPAP, to find the solution to the problems to help you continue using it means you're going to get great sleep. And if you're getting great sleep, it is life changing. Can I have someone in comments that, that tell me, you know, your story like, yes, it changed my life. I love my CPAP. So the people who are just now starting out on CPAP need to hear that from those who have already been through the difficulties and the low valleys, you know, you, you've, you've gone through it and now you're on the mountain. So why not yell it out? Let people know that, yes, it can be difficult in the beginning, but yes, you can get through it. And that's what I'm here for, to try to encourage, answer questions. And um, so what we're going to we're going to go right into it. Uh, what, what our goal is, is to take you on this journey from the point in time that you realize that, you know what? Maybe I, I have sleep apnea all the way through the difficult times. You know, everyone doesn't have difficult times, but most people do. And then all the way to the part where you would say, I love my CPAP. It happens all the time. I see it almost every day. Somebody in my office after having CPAP struggling and then coming back, you know, maybe for a new mask saying, ah, you're right. I love my CPAP. I won't I won't sleep without it now. So first, let's talk about do do I even need CPAP? So I'm guessing that there are some people here on the on this on this show. You're watching the video right now and you're asking yourself, CPAP, do I need CPAP? There are a few ways that you can can learn that. Obviously, you need to go talk to your doctor if you're suspicious that you need CPAP. But even before that, let me tell you, there's a questionnaire. It's called Stop Bang. S T O P B A N G. Now the words are kind of odd, but the first letter of each word sort of represents a question that you can ask yourself. Uh, you can find this online in a lot of places. Matter of fact, I'll post it a little bit later uh, in the Facebook group titled CPAP for Beginners. Stop bang. It's eight questions. And by answering these questions, honestly, you will already know to a, a very good degree as to whether or not you might have sleep apnea. Uh, the questions are things like, uh, do you have headaches in the morning? Do, are you sleepy all day? You know, what is the circumference of your neck? Uh, various questions that will, will indicate that. So definitely check out Stop Bang. That's going to tell you a lot. And then further, uh, go talk to your doctor about the possibility of having sleep apnea. After, um, if the doctor says, yes, you know, you probably or maybe you have sleep apnea, the doctor is going to want you to get a sleep study done with a sleep study. It's a monitoring system can be done at home. What I showed you last week, this one, this is the, the little night owl. It simply just attaches to your finger with some tape. You sleep with this on for a few nights. It gathers data in your cell phone. A doctor reads the report. 
uh, or it can be more intense where you go into the hospital. It's going to be up to you and your doctor as to how you get that done. Uh, when you go into the sleep lab, not necessarily a hospital, but the sleep lab facility and, and you sleep there and you find out if you have sleep apnea. If it is determined that you do have sleep apnea, then uh, one of a couple of things, perhaps a dental device is ordered or more likely a CPAP or a BiPAP or an AutoPAP would be ordered by, by your doctor. So what happens after that? Let's say you go to the sleep lab, you find out you have sleep apnea and a CPAP is, is ordered. Well, the next step is going to be you, you got to get it paid for. So it, depending on your insurance and your situation, you, you may decide to pay out of pocket. It's a little easier to get one right now through out of pocket uh, or going through your insurance, whatever the case, that needs to be worked out. The doctor orders your CPAP. You, you uh, have a CPAP set up by a technician face-to-face, uh, -face, or it can be done online. And once you have your CPAP, you'll choose a CPAP mask. Uh, a lot of times the, the therapist or the technician will guide you in that process to determine the right CPAP mask for you. Even with many, many years of experience, though, it's possible that you end up with the wrong mask. And so a lot of people have you know, initially the wrong mask and it's not working out and we have to switch to a different mask and it's a little better and we switch to another mask and it's still even a little better or maybe they end up going back to the first mask. So a lot of things happen, but the real key uh, to making it all work is to just sticking with it. And we'll talk more about that tonight. I hope everybody's having a good night, by the way. Thank you again. I appreciate you being here on the video with me. And uh, my name is Chris with AffinityHM.com. And if you're just now joining us, I see there's a lot of people coming in right now. Across the bottom of the screen, you'll see that there's going to be a contest. So just type into comments, hashtag CPAP or hashtag CPAP, and you'll be entered into a contest. We're going to give away a gift card a little bit later on tonight. So once you have your CPAP, you're starting to use your CPAP step by step. Um, there are likely, I would say, about nine, nine, 95%, probably 95% of those initially set up on CPAP have some problem. Some people will actually have the problem and not contact or not reach out. And those are the ones that break my heart. I wish that if you're having a problem, you would reach out to your, your doctor, reach out to your supplier, or possibly join the, the group on Facebook, CPAP for Beginners, and reach out there. Because in that group, there are many people who are very savvy and experienced and, you know, not doctors, but but have the experience to be able to answer uh, questions and, and help solve problems. So here are some of the problems. These are in no particular order, but I would say that probably the biggest problem that we have is, is either the mask is not fit correctly and or there may be leaks. Now, first, let's eliminate what you may be thinking. All right. There can be leaks in the CPAP machine or the CPAP hose. Yes, um, it's very uncommon. The water chamber, you know, has a silicone seal that could leak. Uh, the, maybe the water chamber is not in all the way. There's also a seal inside where the chamber connects or interfaces with the CPAP machine. So, yeah, there could be leaks there. It could be the hose itself connected to the water chamber. Uh, it could be in the hose. Maybe you have cats who like to chew. Uh, so it could be in the hose. Uh, but Almost all leaks are either the mask, if you have a full face mask, it's leaking around the mask up at the eyes or down below. Uh, or maybe if you don't have a full face mask, you have just a nasal system, either nasal pillows or the nasal triangle, the, the nasal mask. Um, maybe your mouth is coming open. Now, I always say that if you have a nasal system and your mouth is coming open, that almost always wakes you up. So if you're waking up with your mouth coming open, you guys know what happens. You got that pressure coming in your nose, your mouth opens, and it goes in your nose and right out your mouth. That's going to wake you up. Uh, if that is, is what's going on, then you may need to get a chin strap or possibly switch to a full face mask. Uh, sizing. Now, with the full face mask, the most important thing is that is that the size is correct. Now, what is being measured? What's being measured? Are we measuring like the width or 
what? So here with a full face mask, the most important measurement and the only real measurement that needs to be done is from up here. It's right about where you're the top of your nose, right between your eyes, where it dips the lowest. So for me, it's right there. And then underneath, it's kind of this section right here again, where it dips the lower right under your lower lip, hopefully on the gum and not on the teeth. So then you also do have to consider another thing. And that is many people when they're sleeping, their mouth is closed all the way. Some people do that. So look, that changes. So this could be a medium and this a large. So pay attention to that. By the way, if anyone would like to measure yourself, uh, you can shoot me an email. Just go to our website, affinityhm.com. Scroll all the way down to the bottom of that website. You'll find our email address. Shoot me an email and ask for the template. I can send you through email a template. You would print. You would cut it out. Then on this template, it's super important that you compare a measurement. It's got like a picture of a ruler on it. So you would take your own ruler and make sure that the dimensions are correct because you know how printing is. Sometimes it prints big, sometimes it prints small. So you want to make sure that the size you printed is exactly correct for that template. But once you cut the template out, it has like a little deal like this. So you put the top where it goes and then the bottom, it'll show you small, medium, large, kind of like that. And you find this spot right here at the bottom and it's going to tell you if you got the right size. So sorry to go on so long about that, but it's so, so important. I know uh, through a poll we did on YouTube not too long ago that more than half of you guys are using full face masks. And the most important thing about using a full face mask is that it fits correctly. If you have a mask that's too small or too large, two things. It's going to be super uncomfortable and it's probably going to leak. Now, with a full face mask, do you know what? It does not mean you have to breathe through your mouth. You can breathe through your nose or through your mouth either way. And I think that's why a lot of people use a full face mask, just to kind of ensure that regardless of what I'm doing here, it's, it's, going, to, it's going to work. All right. So, I hope we're getting some questions. So ask me some questions and we're going to hit those questions later on. If some of you who are savvy and experienced see a question in the comments, feel free to please go ahead and, and answer it for, for the folks. All right. So now let's talk about pressure. So in the sleep study, if you did it in a lab, the doctor is going to determine a pressure that's right for you uh, or a, a small range of pressure. For example, they may say uh, 10 to 14. Uh, if you did a sleep study at home, the pressure is going to be a much wider range because there's no testing while on CPAP in the home sleep study. It'll probably be four to 20 or five to 20, something along that line. But these machines are able to run if we're if we have an auto pap, there's two pressures. So the machine would run at the lower of the two pressures as long as it can until it senses that you're having an apnea, apnea meaning not breathing. So if your breathing stops, the machine cranks up a little more to open that airway back up. And uh, so so it's important that the pressure is is right, though. So if you have a pressure that's set too high, it's going to be uncomfortable, hard to hard to get a seal out of it. Uh, as a matter of fact, in the sleep lab, a lot of times the doctor will order the optimal pressure. And then if you're having problems with that, they can crank it down for you a little bit, you know, uh, for a period of time until you can kind of get used to it. But it is important that the pressure be correct. You can learn a lot about the pressure uh, and, and its correctness through looking at the data in your CPAP machine. Are, are there leaks that are happening? It will tell you if, uh, if the mask is leaking. So good. Okay. So that's pressure. That's very common. Here's another one that I hear a lot. Claustrophobic feeling. I've learned something new over the past month or so. And that's through the group also. Is that sometimes when one feels claustrophobic, you know, I, I, I might show a patient the full face mask and they're like, oh no, I don't want that. It's just too much. But for some reason that actually is okay. Even for people who feel claustrophobic. And I believe that it may be because part of the feeling of claustrophobia has to do with breathing. And when you have that full face mask on and you can breathe through your nose or your mouth, it's a certain freedom 
that one feels your eyes are closed anyway. So you're not seeing the full face mask. Hopefully your eyes are closed. And uh, so I no longer just completely rule out the full face mask for someone who is claustrophobic. However, there are those who would prefer if they have that claustrophobic feeling going to like nasal pillows or something that doesn't have a lot. You know, the nasal pillows are so simple. They're just little nasal pillows and there's a simple headgear that goes with that. So that's super easy. Now we do have something new too. It's called bleep, B-L-E-E-P. That's on our website, affinityhm.com under mask and supplies. Bleep is something I'm going to show you very soon, not tonight, but very soon. And it literally is no headgear whatsoever. It, it actually will go into, not in your nose, but up to your nose. It sort of tapes and seals right around here. It's got a little piece of tape and there's zero headgear. You connect your tubing. It holds. It's amazing. And I can't wait to show you this. But bleep is something that one might consider if feeling claustrophobic. So also the pre it's important that the pressure is not too low for someone that's claustrophobic. Because like I was mentioning, it's a breathing thing for some. And if you're not feeling like you're getting enough air, you're going to feel claustrophobic. Even for people who aren't claustrophobic, if you're not getting enough air, it's a very, you know, the walls are closing in kind of feeling. So that is a, a big one that we see. Now, I've noticed uh, also... All right. Uh, aerophagia. Aerophagia just means swallowing air. Very simple, fancy word for swallowing air. If you're swallowing air while you're using your CPAP, it means that possibly you may, you may have a very high pressure. So a lot of times when the pressures get up around, I would say 14 and higher, maybe 12 for some people and higher, when the pressures are up there, there's a lot more chance of, of swallowing some of that air. So people who have these high pressures, if you're having this problem, talk to your doctor. They may be willing or they may agree that a BiPAP machine, the difference of a BiPAP machine and a CPAP machine is the word by B I just meaning two. So you have two pressures, unlike AutoPAP, the two pressures, let me back up with AutoPAP, the two pressures are still going to be the same whether you're breathing in or whether you're breathing out. So if you're set at, a, let's say, 4 to 20 and the machine's running at 10 on auto path, the pressure's running at 10 whether you're breathing in or out. It may crank up to 11 or 12 because it's an auto path. But regardless of whether you're breathing in or out with an auto path, for that breath, the pressure is the same. However, with a BiPAP, what happens is you have two pressures and it may be like 16 and 10, for example. Every single breath, the pressures are different. It would be 16 breathing in and 10 breathing out or whatever your prescription is. So it just makes it far more easy to breathe out. So it's a more comfortable machine. However, it's far more expensive. So uh, it's about three times the cost. So they get pretty pricey. So we don't want to go to BiPAP unless we have to go to BiPAP. But if you need to go to BiPAP, you need to go to BiPAP. Uh, so the high pressures are, are sometimes the culprit in, in having the aerophagia. Sometimes it's as simple as neck position. So if you're if you think about this, all right, think about the fact that you got it. You got your mouth and in here you have your trachea. And, 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 and your trachea is your air tube, and it goes into the bronchi and into the lungs, right? This is all toward the front of your neck. And also, you eat, right? And there's the esophagus, but the esophagus is a little deeper and further back in your neck. It runs right along, you know, this is trachea, this is esophagus. It runs right behind. So when you're flipped back like this, it provides a little bit of a more clear airway for the air or for the air to actually get all the way back and into the esophagus. If your neck is further down, if your chin is further down like so, then it sort of blocks the esophagus to a certain extent. So sometimes that is the simplest solution for aerophagia is just to instead of having your your, your head way back like so. Have it a little more like like this. Of course, you want to remain comfortable. So be careful not to like get yourself contorted into some weird position whenever you're trying to sleep uh, to avoid the aerophagia. But um, just make sure you're not kind of like way back like that. 
Uh, I have seen some people actually use a, a soft cervical collar while sleeping. Uh, some people will even incline if you if you get like a wedge for the bed or uh, stack a bunch of pillows up, you can incline a little bit more and that's going to change your your neck position as well. So that can be one really good solution for those of you who are who are suffering from that. Also talk to your doctor. Uh, a different mask can sometimes even make a difference. And uh, but talk to your doctor about it. Make sure you're reaching out to your clinical people about these problems because there are, are many different um, solutions for that. So here's another question that a lot of people have about cleaning the CPAP mask and hose and water reservoir. So definitely soap and water is what you read the the books on the mask and the machines from the companies and they're going to say use a mild dish detergent water and wash it on a daily basis with warm soapy water however there are a lot of folks out there who will not do that every single day and if you're not cleaning it on a regular basis or let's say at least once a week if you're not cleaning it once a week with the warm soapy water you find yourself not doing it then I highly recommend getting an ozone cleaner. An ozone cleaner like a Sleep 8, Purify 03, Purify 03 Elite, maybe a Lumen. Uh, there are different ways to clean it. And if these pieces of equipment are used properly, then they are perfectly safe. And uh, reach out to me, ask me. You can call me at my office. We'll talk about it. They are perfectly safe when used properly. Just like a knife. A knife in a kitchen, yeah, you can cut your finger if you're not using it right, but it has a very useful purpose. So it's important to use it properly, but it is something that is very effective. It kills 99.9% .9 of mold, bacteria, and virus, and it's, it's a great way to, to go. People who do have ozone cleaners or UV light cleaners, uh, most, often, uh, most of them on a somewhat regular basis, maybe every few months, do the soapy water also. It uh, doesn't have to be done all of the time, though. So, okay. Now, here's another big one. Dry mouth. What causes dry mouth? Let's go back to we were talking a little while ago about leaks. So, if, you're, if your mouth is coming open and you, and you don't have a full face mask, then all of that air is obviously going to dry your mouth out terribly. So, that's going to probably be a leak if you have a dry mouth. And... Um, or it could be that you don't have your humidifier turned up enough. So, you know, you have a control on your CPAP machine that controls the, the humidifier. And most of us think of it as the humidity control. You know what it's really controlling? Underneath that water reservoir, next time before you put that water in, notice what's underneath it. It's a little circle, a metal circle. It's a, almost like a little hot plate. So you're, you're really controlling the temperature of that little hot plate underneath the water. The higher you have that turned, the more warmth it's going to provide to the water. And the warmer the water is, the more humidity that it's going to create. It does not change the temperature of the air much at all. It mostly just changes the temperature of the water and increases the amount of humidity that you're getting. So dry mouth can be generally either coming from leaks or you, may, you need to crank up your humidifier a little bit. So if you crank up your humidifier a little bit too much, uh, you're going to have water in the mask or tubing. I saw a comment on the in the Facebook group. Somebody was mentioning brand new on CPAP. I'm, I'm hearing these strange sounds coming from my CPAP tubing. Well, it's probably somewhere where that tubing has dipped. Enough water is accumulated and drained down into that into that dip. And, and then it actually can get to the point that it's actually blocking the airflow. And that's important not to have that happen. So if you're blocking the airflow, it's going to be like, blah, 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 you know, and you'll hear these noises and it shakes the tube and everything. So that would mean that there's only two solutions. One, you would have to turn down the amount of humidity to decrease the amount of moisture that's coming into the tube or you know it's it's a it's a, a function of the difference of the temperature inside the tube versus the temperature in the room so if it's warm in the tube and cool in the room then that difference you have to adjust that so either you're turning down your humidifier or you're increasing the temperature in the room just to get them closer to the same temperature uh, me, I like to sleep in cold. So I, I've got it like 67, you know, 68 degrees in my house when I'm sleeping. And uh, so I wouldn't opt for that. I would prefer to actually turn the humidifier down a little bit 
and uh, maybe have a glass of water handy through the night that you can drink a little bit if if uh, the humidifier is what's drying you out. So the most important thing that I can tell you guys, if you're having problems with your CPAP, is two things. One, talk to your doctor, talk to your clinician, or reach out to, to us in the group. And two, just stay consistent. Stay consistent. Just keep using it. Even if, you know what, you're not failing if you start the night off with your CPAP and you don't make it all the way through the night, that's okay because you started the night out. And I can promise you that if you just start the night out every night, no breaks, you know, breaks, um, no excuses. But if you just start the night out every single night, whenever you do encounter some of these problems, you're going to find solutions for the problems. And also, if you're only getting one hour or two hours initially, that will begin to expand and you'll see that you're, you're getting further and further in, in and through the night with your CPAP. So just hang in there and, and just make that commitment to at least start out every single night using your CPAP. Another really good thing that one can do is new, brand new on CPAP is to, even though you don't need it while you're awake, I find that, that this messes with us a lot as we're trying to fall asleep. We, we start thinking about a little too much, like, how am I breathing? Am I breathing in all the way? Am I breathing out all the way? And it just, you start almost like focusing so much. So what you can do to break that, because the less you think about it, the better off you're going to be. The way to break that is to focus your mind on other things. And a great thing is while you're awake in the day, bring that CPAP machine in next to your recliner or, or your sofa, watch some TV while you're awake, use your CPAP, get used to it, and notice how at some point you're watching a really great movie on Prime Video. At some point, you, you forgot that you even had your CPAP on or you're reading a really good book and you, you'll, you'll realize, oh, you know what? I just read two pages and I forgot I even had my CPAP. So it's really good. It's a great way to acclimate yourself and get yourself just used to using a CPAP so that when it is time to go to bed, it's not so much like, ah, oh, how am I breathing? You know, and, and another thing, when you exhale on CPAP, always keep in mind that you it's not going to be the same sensation because you have pressure still in your lungs. That point of exhalation, the end of exhalation is going to be at a different place from where it would be without the CPAP. Does that make sense? It's like there's a little bit of pressure. So it feels like I'm not exhaling all of my air. But I promise you, you are. You actually are because you're once you relax, your rib cages will cause you to exhale all the air when you're in a relaxed state and uh, it's all going to work out just fine. It's just going to feel different, but it's going to be wonderful, actually, even beyond just OK. It's going to be fantastic once you get to the place where you can actually actually use your CPAP all night. I've seen so many people who uh, who that was the case for. So if you haven't already done it, please type into comments, hashtag CPAP. We're going to give away this gift card here in just a minute. Uh, before we do that, though, I want to show you a new product we've got. This new product is called the CPAP Lift. So we were talking, uh, do you see there? It's a blue, sort of a blue rod that goes up at the top. It's got this loop. You can place that base underneath the mattress you can either put it as it is here in this picture, or you could work it around the corner toward the head of the bed and place it there as well. Uh, that picture made me think, think that it was actually attached to the bed, but it's not. A, I've got them in now. I've got them here with me. So it's actually not attached to the bed in any way. It just stands right there. And what I find to be one of the most fascinating things about this CPAP lip, getting that hose Two things. One, once you get that hose up, you're going to have a lot less problem that we were discussing a minute ago with water in the tubing, because now any water that is created in the tubing is going to have the ability to flow straight downhill right back into the reservoir. It's clean water, so it's fine. And uh, you, you're just not going to have that problem anymore. And uh, then, then two, having the CPAP lift will send the hose away from your face up toward that loop. 
So now the hose is not like all over your body. You can lie on your back, flip to your right side, flip to your left side, flip all the way around in a whole circle if you want to. And it's going to, it's going to be a marvelous, marvelous and wonderful thing. Uh, Cat Church, one of our members here had been suggesting getting this and we just got this in stock and I'm real excited about having it. So look at this. That's the whole CPAP lift right there. Comes in a nice little carry case. So you actually can travel with this. It actually will just fit right into your CPAP bag. I'm gonna take it out. I just want it. You won't be able to see the whole thing because it's too big to really get the whole thing in the screen. But I wanna show you kind of how it's made and how easy it is to, to sort of get set up. Uh, just take this little rubber band off. It's got a little marketing material here. But here's how it's made. And in each of these links, there is a little piece of nylon string. So it almost assembles itself really, but it just sort of goes together like so. Got that nylon, so it can't come apart. It can't get lost. Check this out. It's just popping itself together as I allow it to. And I know, uh, I know you wanna see this loop at the top. So let me see if I can get that to the camera here for you. Here's the, the little curly Q loop that your CPAP tubing would actually go through. And it's made of this material so that the tubing can actually slide back and forth. And it also will swivel and the whole the, this whole piece will swivel around. So it actually is complete freedom really for your CPAP tubing. And then at the bottom, the little base goes together as well in the same fashion. And it's got a nice deep where the where the main part of the hose, um, pole goes into the base. It's got a nice deep connection right there so that it won't come out of place. And uh, so again, you just place this base underneath the mattress. And uh, as long as it's got some weight on it, you could, if you wanted to put the base on a bedside table, if you didn't want to do the mattresses with some books on it, perhaps, or just something to really weight it down real well. And then, and then at the top, there's your, there's your hose. And uh, these are very inexpensive too. And I've got them on our website. So it's called the CPAP lift. It's something is very innovative. It's a really new thing for CPAP in general. And uh, I think they're $15, but you can get a discount 10% off and uh, affinityhm.com. It's under the section CPAP and sleep, and then go to CPAP mask and supplies to find that CPAP lift. Thanks for watching that part. So you guys ready to do a giveaway? If you haven't already done it, this is your last chance to type in comments, hashtag CPAP, and we're going to give away a gift card. By the way, the gift card would get you one of these for free, uh, actually a little more than that even. So now let's see. I want to see if we have a few people in the contest. Oh, yeah, we got a lot of questions. Okay, so we'll get to the questions here in just a minute. And there are a number of people in the contest. So uh, let's go ahead and do the contest, and then we'll go to the questions and answers after that. All right, first thing I need to do is share the screen so you guys can see who, who is winning this contest. Give me just a moment here. Please continue asking your questions, if you would, here in the, in the comments, and we'll do our best to answer them here in just a moment. All right. I think you are seeing the screen. Let's make that bigger so you can really see it. Good. All right. Now let's see who has won the gift card for tonight. I see a lot of folks here. Thanks, everybody, for being here with us. And the winner is uh, Judy Virgilio. Virgilio. Thank you, Judy. Congratulations. You have won the gift card. So, Judy, if you would, please... Uh, Either uh, let's see, you're on Facebook, so you can you can just shoot me a message uh, through Facebook and uh, give me your email address. That's all I need is your email address, and I'll be sure to get that gift card sent out to you ASAP on tomorrow. And uh, congratulations, good job. All right, finally somebody won other than Kimberly. <laughs> Uh, it's just a joke, Kimberly. But uh, Kimberly does really well. Thank you, Kimberly, for being here, too. And thank you, everyone, for being here. All right, let's get to some questions. Let's see if we can find some answers for everybody. I'm going to scroll all the way back up to the top. And oh, my goodness, there's a lot of questions. Loretta, Loretta, thank you for this comment. Loretta says, yes, it is life changing. All right, Kimberly, can't sleep without it. Didn't didn't think 
I would be able to get used to it. Yes, that's actually right now. That's where a lot of people are. They're like, oh, my God, I'm just not going to be able to get used to this. But your testimony right there tells them that, yeah, they actually can. Bob Albright, absolutely. CPAP therapy works. It's truly changed my life. Everyone just needs to be diligent. Good word, Bob. Diligent is definitely the key. Belty Cat, I've used CPAP for 30 years and I still sometimes have struggles, but there's no way I would go without it. That's true. Yeah. Even for those, you know, who've used it for a long time, you're going to run into problems and roadblocks. But again, the key, just like Bob said, diligent, be diligent. Loretta. Okay. Loretta's in the contest. All right. Um, so Nuke Weather said, took me several months to get used to his CPAP. Several months. Wow. Uh, Belty Cat, when someone is diagnosed needing CPAP, they have already suffered for a long time, so they are desperate for a quick fix. DME providers would be good to present uh, adjusting to the CPAP process. Yeah, that's that's exactly true. Uh, I think some people are under the illusion that uh, I'm just going to get this CPAP machine and bam, all my troubles are fixed. And it's not exactly that way. It's something that you do have to kind of stick with and, and get through. Uh, so Nuke Weather took me several months to get used to my CPAP, but now I can't imagine not having a CPAP. But using CPAP since April of 18, I sleep so much better now. That's awesome, Sanuke Weather, and thanks again for being here. All right, so that's some really, really great. Um, somebody from Facebook, I'm not sure uh, who that is, but thanks for the comment. And the Facebook group's helped a lot. I think the Facebook group is helping a lot of people, and I'm really super excited about that. Melty Cat. The four hour requirement by insurance is a burden to many new CPAP users because they feel forced to accumulate hours instead of focusing on treatment. Great point. Absolutely a great point. You know that uh, the, the rule on that, in case any of you guys are new and using Medicare to pay for your CPAP, the, the rule is that you only have to have 70% of nights over four hours in any 30 day period. So, and that's over the first 90 days. So, so look at the first full 90 days and then you can find any 30 day period, whether it's the beginning, the, you know, through the middle or at the end, any 30 day period where 70% of the nights was over four hours. That's really not hard to do if, especially if you're at least starting out the night every night. And like I said, you're going to get to the point where that's a no brainer that you're able to, to get to that point, but don't feel so much pressure with the hours. Just like, like he said, you know, just think about the therapy and focus on that part of it and start out every single night and you will, you will get there. Uh, Belty cat, many uh, leaks can be resolved by the use of the hose holder. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Loretta took me eight months to find the right mask. Finally did well with the Dreamwear nasal and it changed my life. Awesome. Thank you, Loretta. What I found about masks is they are so, so single person. I mean, I think that if there were a million different masks, uh, there would be a million different people using those million different masks. And you know, it's just a matter of just keeping keeping with it. I know they're a little pricey. The CPAP mask can be. All right, that's Bob getting in the contest. We have a Facebook user. C CVS has measuring templates for face mask. Okay, I didn't know that. That's very interesting. So you can get a measuring template at CVS, or you can email me, whatever you would like to do. Loretta, after using the nasal mask for a couple of months, my mouth didn't open anymore. Oh, I'm glad you mentioned that. I wanted to I wanted to talk about that a little bit. Um, you know, a lot of people who have had sleep apnea for years and years and years, they breathe through their mouth, but it's because of the sleep apnea. It's like your body is, you know, while you're asleep, your body is just trying to find some air and, and you'll gasp and open your mouth and gasp for air. And so that is just a condition because of the sleep apnea. So for many, and, and like yourself, I believe, once you have treated the sleep apnea, whether it's with a full face or with a nasal pillow, you tend to, to breathe through your nose. That's the more natural and normal way to breathe. Unless you have some sort of problem with your nose, then, uh, then breathing through the nose is really where, where you want it to go um, eventually. Because not only is the nasal pillows and the nasal mask more comfortable, it's the more natural way 
to go with your breathing. Belty Cat, does anyone know if insurance companies are still paying for CPAP supplies, even if patient has received a do, do not use a recalled machine letter from the DME provider? Oh, uh, yeah, I don't know the answer to that one. But uh, maybe somebody else on, on the chat here can can answer that for us. And OK, let's see. Let's see. All right. Belty Cat, cleaning your CPAP cushions and rinsing it daily will make your cushions last much longer and saves money. Oh, I'm glad you said that, too. That's very true. It makes them last longer and it's it's cleaner. But you know what? There's one more. Uh, you might have mentioned this here, here a little bit later, but there's one more big thing, and that is the oil from your skin. Once it gets on that mask and it stays there, then it actually can produce leaks. So a cleaner mask it is going to seal better. And so, the, you know, wash it, make sure it's clean and you'll have less problems. Here's Judy. Why do I get dry mouth and a lot of mucus with a full face mask? So it doesn't happen, I'm guessing, with the regular mask, but it only happens with the full face mask. Um, I don't know the answer to that, Judy. All right, I'm going to think on that one, Judy, and I'm going to get back with you. When you email me, I'm going to see if I can find an answer for you on that. Sorry, I don't know that one. Belty Cat for cleaning. I use Ivory Dish liquid in the white bottle and the CPAP wipes. Always rinse completely. A very slightly tacky mask leaks less. Yep, I figured you would get to that. And uh, and then a totally slick mask. All right, Belty Cat. When you reach out and help give specifics, it will be easier for people to help you. Yeah, that's very true. Yeah, yeah. Tell them exactly what's going on, what your problem is, and hopefully they'll be able to help. What worked for me was just to make myself use my CPAP every night when I first started till I got used to it. Now I have no problem using CPAP every night. That's awesome. Great comment. Thank you, Sanuk. Tony. All right. Tony, do you recommend taking your taping your mouth to prevent breathing in your mouth, thus having dry mouth? You know what? I used to always say, no, don't tape your mouth. And here it depends on what tape you're using. OK, here's the answer. Don't tape your mouth with duct tape or any kind of just regular old tape. But there is a new product that I like a lot. It's called Somni Fix. S-O-M-N-I-F-I-X. Somni Fix. This tape is made for CPAP users for one thing, but it has a little slit in it. I never liked the tape because if, let's say, you know, if you got sick and you, you needed to, you know, in the middle of the night and while you were sleeping, you needed to throw up or something then the tape could prevent and cause an aspiration, cause you to breathe that stuff into your lungs. That would be terrible. But with Somnifix, they have a little slit. So you literally can still just pop that, pop it open, you know, when you need to. So that may, that's a safety feature with that tape. So I highly recommend if you're going to tape, use Somnifix. And to answer your question, that was the only reason I didn't like tape in the past. So with Somnifix, I think, yeah, the, ta the taping of the mouth is something that, uh, do check it with your doctor to be sure. Uh, but I think it's fine. I think it's absolutely fine. All right. CPAP hose holder can save, can save lots of problems. I highly recommend them. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Um, Loretta, I use a, a CPAP holder, hose holder, but also my hose attaches to my mask at the top of my head. So that does help too, to have the type of of CPAP interface that attaches that that helps, but the the hose holder has another purpose too, and that is to keep that water drained into your into your humidifier. So that's one one good thing to do. All right, so then we had the contest, and uh, oh look, somebody else who likes Somnifix, Tony. Somnifix a good. Oh, okay, you're the same one that asked the other question. Yes, Somnifix is good. I like it a lot. Matter of fact, I reached out to them to try to provide that. I haven't heard from them yet. Owner. Aslantis, before using CPAP, I was tired like a dead man. CPAP changed my life, but R8 now, I feel tired again. What to do? Okay, so you need to talk to your doctor. Um, sometimes the amount of pressure changes that you need. Um, I'm wondering if your mask is still good. Maybe you need a new mask, fresh mask, fresh hose. 
And it could be other things that's going on with you um, other than sleep apnea. But definitely reach out to your physician. Let them know, you, hey, it was going great, and now it's not going so great. So there could be some tweaks that need to be done with the CPAP if things change. You know, as we get older, I don't know what the time frame is for these changes that you've experienced. But as we get older, a lot of things can happen. We maybe gain a little weight. Um, the older we are, the more soft the tissues are in our airway which means, you know, maybe you need a little more pressure, but uh, that's something really for the doctor to analyze and talk with you about. And uh, definitely it can be fixed. Uh, just gotta, just gotta reach out. All right, Judy, my hardest thing to deal with is the air in my eyes. It caused really bad dry eyes. Yeah. Um, now, you know, one good solution for many, um, maybe not, maybe not for you. I'm not sure, Judy, but for many, uh, the hybrid mask. So the full face mask is coming all the way up to here. And if it's, if it's leaking around your eyes, it's going to be a mess. But with the hybrid, you still have the, the nasal piece and then you, it goes over your mouth too. So with the hybrid mask, you can still breathe through your nose and or mouth, but it's not coming up around your eyes. So it's not an issue with your eyes. But again, the sizing of the mask is crucial. And, um, the hybrid might be a good solution, possibly. All right, Onur, what can I do to eliminate red marks of the CPAP? Well, uh, check out the bleep, B-L-E-E-P. It's uh, under on our website, affinityhm.com, under CPAP and sleep, and then under CPAP mask and supplies. Look at the bleep. That's the one I was mentioning that I'm going to show you very soon. It tapes. It's just a nasal piece that just tapes right to your nose. And that's that's it. You got a little tape right here. Nothing else. No headgear. Nothing else. You probably need a CPAP hose lift just to make sure that there's not pressure pulling on that all the time. But uh, I really, really like the bleep. For many, that's going to be a, a good solution. Owner, what can I do to eliminate? Okay, we already answered that one. Sorry about that. All right. Um, Judy, I never had a nasal mask. Okay, well, perhaps let's give that a try. Owner, what can I do to eliminate the rim? Oh, we already got that. Okay. What am I doing? Oh, my bad, guys. I don't know how to operate this system. <laughs> all right. I think that's all the questions. Um, let's see. Yeah, that's... Oh, wait, here we go. One more question. Last question. If you maintain an AHI reading less than five for almost a month, does that mean that you are well and may not use CPAP anymore? No, it does. Well, if you're maintaining the less than five while using CPAP, well, the CPAP is the reason that your, your AHI is staying down. So talk to your doctor about that. But uh, the AHI number is the apnea hypotenea index. So I'm going to assume you got that number from the CPAP machine, which would mean that the, having the CPAP machine is the reason that the AHI has, has come down. So unfortunately, no on that one. All right. So that's all we got for questions and answers. And, uh, I appreciate you guys being here. I've got another video. If you want to check it out on YouTube, uh, just go over to our YouTube channel. You can, if you're not subscribed, you can just search Affinity HM in YouTube. If you're on Facebook, please join the group Facebook for Beginners. It's a fantastic group, whether you're brand new on CPAP uh, or if you're an experienced CPAP user. Either way, join the group. You're going to find out things and learn things that you didn't know, no matter how long you've been using CPAP, I promise you. All right, so that's everything I got. I hope everyone has a wonderful Thursday evening. Enjoy your beautiful spring weekend that is on tap right now. And uh, I'll see you again here on next Thursday night. Y'all have a good night. Take care, everybody.